After a long awaited return, Chris Boulder Nazi Redfield returns to the fold. For nearly a year now, fans were divided over who he actually was. The Chris Redfield we knew shed blood and tears, lost friends and family to the company he's been fighting his entire career, only to join them now? So, how did Redfield become associated with the villainous Umbrella? Prior to the events in Resident Evil 7, Chris Redfield was a prominent member of the BSAA, a group that combated bioterrorism around the globe. What is bioterrorism exactly? The use of toxic agents and chemicals for the intent of bringing harm to the world. An example being zombies, las plagas, and now the molded. Chris Redfield was the BSAA agent that personally put an end to Albert Wesker, one of the most infamous bioterrorists of all time and a pivotal Umbrella member back in the day. If the Umbrella Corporation were a real-life company, the best comparison would be IG Farben, a now defunct company that supplied poisonous gas to the Nazi party back in World War II. Well, two Nazi references in one video. Umbrella Corp and IG Farben are similar in that they were both pharmaceutical companies at one point and eventually turned to use their assets on assisting to the deaths of millions. So you can start to see why it was so unbelievable that Chris Redfield, or anyone for that matter, would want to associate themselves with that sort of reputation. Umbrella went down and under in 2004 thanks to the amount of deaths it was responsible for and the severe lawsuits it couldn't even afford to win. But in 2007, some former employees turned the company upside down and renamed it Blue Umbrella, a private military corporation focused on destroying what it caused. Essentially, this Blue Umbrella would right its wrongs in an attempt to redeem itself. Once the BSA held enough trust behind this new Umbrella's purpose, it assigned Chris Redfield to investigate the events in Resident Evil 7. Still, Chris hardly puts any trust on this new Umbrella. If they weren't, I wouldn't be here. But working with Umbrella is going to take some getting used to on my part. I know it must be difficult, and to tell the truth, a lot of our members have been with us since even before we reincorporated as a PMC. About all that's left now is the name. The initial mission is to find and rescue three Blue Umbrella operatives that were being held hostage by Lucas Baker, a psychopathic, high-ranking researcher of the Molded. Whatever bad blood Chris held against Umbrella needed to be put on hold as both the lives of Chris and the operatives were at stake. Unfortunately, they were just being picked off one by one. Lucas! No! Ah! Uh, oops. <laughs> now here's the deal, Chris. You don't follow me, and I'll bounce your head off the ceiling. Oh, the same goes for your little soldier brains too. Adios. Chris Redfield, wearing an Umbrella Operative uniform, eventually grabs a hold of Lucas and puts an end to his game. Game over. This character story arc provides us with an interesting twist where he starts off as an essential player that destroys Umbrella and eventually grows into being one of their operatives, under different circumstances of course. In conclusion, I absolutely love what they've done to Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 7. He's become more than just a hero that saves the day, he's a more layered character that faces crucial decisions and consequences he has no control over. And by stripping away this hero facade, we are left with an interesting twist to one of the most recognizable characters in the Resident Evil series. Did you like the new Chris Redfield? Be sure to comment down below. Thanks so much for watching Nachos, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment suggestions for future lore videos. Again, thanks for watching, and as always, stay single.